Yeah, now we are taking up the periodic properties. So we have various periodic properties uh, that, uh, that an element can show. So the first property we are taking into the consideration is atomic radii. So what does atomic radii mean? Atomic radii actually means, see we have an atom and we uh, assume that atom to be a sphere. So the distance between the distance from the center of the nucleus to the outermost shell is called as atomic radii. So that means atomic radii is the distance from the center of the nucleus to an outermost shell. So how this property uh, varies along group and period as I have told you when we were doing the modern periodic law, uh, sorry the modern periodic table. So I told you there were 18 groups and 7 periods. So we need to know the how properties varies along group and how properties vary along period. So first property is atomic radii. So for uh, the sake of convenience I am taking an example. So let us consider the first group that is the alkali metal group. See, we know it consists of hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium and francium. You all know this now. So we are taking into consideration that how atomic radii vary when we move along the group, when we move down the group, how atomic radii vary. Like what uh, similarity do the group elements have and what the similarity they have when they are compared to the other group. So, First, uh, we are taking into consideration the first step uh, we have to write the atomic numbers. So, atomic number of lithium is 3 we know and for the sodium it is 11 and for the potassium it is 19 and uh, for uh, rubidium it is 37, for cesium it is 55 and for francium we have 87. But we will be excluding francium because francium is a radioactive element, all elements which are placed below at the in the last row uh, are radioactive at, uh, elements that means they have unstable nuclei. So all those properties which we are studying will not be uh, taking into consideration for the radioactive elements because they show different properties. So we will we'll be taking an example only uh, this thing before the last one means till the sixth group will be the sixth element of the sixth uh, uh, period we can say. So I am taking into consideration only the six elements because last one is the francium and francium sto show radioactive properties. So after writing the atomic numbers I am writing the electronic configuration. So just look at the board carefully so that you should know that what similarity or what you can have an idea that how the size varies. But for 37 and 55 you won't be able to write electronic configuration because there is a different method of writing the configuration. As you will go in higher class in plus 1 you will go to you will go uh, you will learn that uh, the writing of electronic configuration is something different you have done till now. So just write the electronic configuration till the 20 atomic number because before that after that you don't know how to write it. So just for your level write it till potassium. So what, what can you see in the, on the board, see lithium that means it consists of 2 shells right K and L, for sodium it is 3 shells K, L, M, for potassium it is 4 shells K, L, M and N. So what do you think that out of lithium, sodium and potassium which will be bigger? So you can easily see it contain only 2 shells my means 2 electron clouds and it contain 3 it contained 4. So likewise as we are moving down the group every time a new shell is being added. What you see that every time a new shell is added. So what happens when new shell is added then what do you think that probably has happened that you know, the size goes on increasing as we are moving down the group. So again I am repeating as we are moving down the group every time you can see a new shell is being added due to which the nuclear charge uh, what is nuclear charge? It is actually the attraction of electron that it is experiencing from the nucleus. Nuclear charge is the force with which the nucleus exert on the outermost shell electrons and it is always an attractive force. So whenever a new shell is being added then nuclear charge decreases. This leads to increase in size. 
that means attraction is not so strong therefore the electrons are not so closer to the nucleus they are slightly they are experiencing the less force of attraction so that's why size increase so how you're going to write an answer if you will get that how the size increase along the group you will be writing that you will write the atomic number configuration then you will be writing as we move down the group every time a new shell is being added that you can see it has two shells it has got three shells it has got four shell and likewise it happens for rubidium and for cesium by one one shell increases as we move down each step. So every time a new shell is being added due to which nuclear charge decreases and which leads to increase in the atomic size. That means the size increases as we move down the group. But now uh, we are considering a period. So let us take an example of second period. So second period consists of uh, this thing lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine and neon. So I am writing the electronic configuration for them. So it is 2 1, it is 2 2, it is 2 3, it is 2 4, it is 2 5, it is 2 6, it is 2 7 and it is 2 8. So uh, now do you have an idea about the atomic size? What do you think that the size may increase or decrease as you move along the period? So what do you get to see by looking at the electronic configuration? We see every time the shell number of shell remains same every time the number of shell remains same when i'm taking example of second period so all these elements of the second period they have only two shells only two shells but what change uh, do you observe when you move from one step to another we see that every time when we move in a period that means every time a new electron is added to the same shell there is no change in the number of shell. The shell is always the L. But every time a new electron is added. See, when we move from lithium to beryllium, there is increase in one electron. Similarly, when we move from beryllium to boron, there is increase in one electron. And similarly, it happens as we move along the period. So, every time when we move uh, in a period, we see a new electron is added to the same shell. Then what happened when new electron is added? That means the nuclear charge, the attraction which they are experiencing by the nucleus increase and whenever the attraction increase that means the shell the outer shell will uh, ex uh, will uh, contract so that means the size decrease so this is how the first atomic rate uh, property atomic radii vary along group and period that is along group it always increases no matter it is a metallic group or a non-metallic group, it always increases down the group. Because when you will be writing the electronic configuration for the different groups, you will get to see that every time when we are moving down, so at each step there is an increase of one shell. And whenever the new shell is added, the nuclear charge decrease, that means the force of attraction decrease. So the outermost shell move farther uh, from the nucleus, that is why the size increase. And if I take an example of period, the size always decrease when we move in a period, but still we get to see certain exceptions also that we'll discuss later on so i'm taking example of second period i've written the elements accordingly with the electronic configuration and as we move along the period the elements of the period we see that every time a new electron is added to the same shell at each step there is an increase in one electron in outermost shell then what happens due to this the nuclear charge increase leading to decrease in the atomic size that means the outermost shell is getting contracted and the this the size the atom just get condensed so that is why the size decrease so that means in the periodic table the elements which are present in the group one are biggest of the all biggest in their own period like if i'm taking example of second period so out of this period which is which is going to be biggest this is going to be biggest and similarly for third period sodium is going to be biggest and if we talk about the smallest one then they are not the 18 group because 18 group elements actually are noble gases noble gases have the uh, you can say the certain kind of special force in them called as wonder wall force and which is a weak force this wonder wall force i repeat the noble gases have a certain kind of force called wonder wall force which is a weak force so this uh, that is and moreover we know they have stable electronic configuration their octet is complete so all those uh, the, the properties which we are following 
uh, extend only up to the 17th group that is up to the halogens so the biggest is the biggest group is alkali group and the smallest group is the halogen group so uh, do not include noble gases in your uh, this thing the when, uh, whenever you are uh, making any property consider when you are considering any property because they show an exceptional case and similarly the seventh uh, group elements now the seventh period also show an exceptional case as they are radioactive so just keep in mind all those properties which i am telling you are just applicable to other members not to the 18th group and not to the elements of the seventh period so this is how you are going to explain the first property atomic radii i think you must have uh, understood it well now so we are taking into consideration the second property that is the ionization energy we can also call the ionization energy as ionization enthalpy just keep in mind that enthalpy and energy both are same whether you use word enthalpy or it is energy it is one and the same thing the difference is there but you will get to know in higher class so up to your level you can easily use the word enthalpy or energy as one word so second property that we are taking into consideration is ionization energy so what is this energy ionization energy is actually a energy you know there is a nucleus we know there are shells and in shells electrons are present so for example the outermost shell i am the example i am taking the outermost shell is l and it contains one electron so that means two electron is there in the k shell and one electron is there so it comes out to be three atomic number that means the atomic model this i have drawn is for lithium so likewise you can draw a model for any one so uh, what does this property actually means ionization energy means that we know that the configuration of lithium the example we took is 2 1 that means to acquire the noble gas configuration it has to lose its valence shell electron that is the one electron it has to lose this electron right so how it is going to lose this electron it uh, and we have already studied in the bohr model the electron neither lose energy nor gain energy when it is present in its own orbit because the orbits are called as energy levels because they have fixed amount of energy right i think you remember it so uh, likewise it is applicable in that this case also that means lithium need to uh, lose one electron but it cannot lose on its own it require a certain energy from outside to uh, remove uh, to lose this electron and this energy is called as ionization energy so i am again repeating ionization energy is the amount of energy which will be giving it from outside right this energy will be giving from an external source so this energy is will, will be accepted by this electron and when it accept this energy it will get ejected so that means it is a ionization energy i repeat amount of energy which is required required means we have to supply it from outside right the amount of energy which is required to remove more uh, this thing the loosely bound electron from outermost shell of an atom any electron that enters it enters into the valence shell that means the outermost shell any electron which is lost is ha it happens uh, through the uh, similar same uh, through the valence shell so any electron is entering or going it is done in the valence shell inner shells do not participate at all so everything the in bond formation the shell which is involved is valence shell so just keep in mind the electron which is coming or electron which the atom is losing is the outermost electron everything is happening on the outermost in the outermost shell right so ionization energy is the amount of energy which we are giving right see we are giving it from any external source to eject this electron this electron will pick up this energy and will get ejected right so this is called as ionization energy now we are looking for the factors on which ionization energy depends and how it varies along group and period so similarly i am taking an example of group so a long group ionization energy actually decreases now we are looking like, like what are the factors which leads to decrease in this ionization energy so again i am taking an example of first group so right lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium francium i am not taking because it is a radioactive element so again i am writing the configuration as you can see i'm writing only till potassium because uh, beyond uh, it you'll be learning how to write the configuration in the 11th class so i I've, i've written this electronic configuration so just see as we are moving down we uh, i've told you that ionization energy decrease as we move down the group right 
Now how it is getting decrease? So same as we did in atomic radii, every time when we are moving, what happened? New shell is being added. You can see two shells, three shells, four shells. So that means new shell is added. What happens due to this? Nuclear charge decrease means the outermost electron is experiencing less force of attraction by nucleus right so that means if the nucleus is here the outermost shell electron is here it is getting expanded you can say so if when the nuclear charge decrease that means the nucleus has no control less control you can say on its valence shell electron so that means it can be easily uh, removed so that means the energy which will be required required to remove that electron will obviously low so that means every time when we move down the size in the shell increase nuclear charge decrease that means the uh, the force of attraction which an electron is experiencing from the nucleus is less so that obviously it means when it is experiencing the less force of attraction that means less energy is required from outside to remove that electron so that means ionization energy decrease as we move down the group now Taking into consideration similarly what happens along period. So I am taking the same example, I am taking the second period. So lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine. I am not writing the noble gas configuration, but uh, this thing noble gases, but still okay you can write it also, it is not a big deal. So I am writing the configuration, again you know how to write this configuration. So I am writing this configuration in this way. Now what happens? When we are moving along period as we did in atomic radii, as we are moving along period what happens? A new electron is added in same shell due to which nuclear charge increase and size decrease. This we already did in this atomic radii. Now uh, we are uh, just looking that how ionization energy varies uh, with this factor. So again uh, uh, I am just explaining you just listen to it carefully. New electron is added that means nuclear charge increase. When there is an increase in nuclear charge that means nucleus is attracting that uh, the outermost electrons with a greater force right. So when there is uh, the greater force of attraction so you tell me that energy required to remove that electron will be more or less. Obviously, it is going to be more because we, uh, the electron has to overcome that force of attraction to get removed. So that means ionization energy increase as we move along period, right. And if we take an example of noble gas, so that means lithium has the uh, less uh, ionization energy, it has more, it has more, 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 more and it goes on increasing. So neon has neon also has the higher ionization energy. Now the question must be striking your mind that out of fluorine and neon ma'am you said that uh, this thing the fluorine is the smallest one and neon is not the smallest one because it has a special wonder wall force which is a weak force in noble gases. But still the ionization energy of neon is greater than fluorine. You know what the reason behind? The reason behind that it has already fulfilled its octet. It has the noble gas configuration, stable configuration. That means the, there is an exact balance between the electrons and the nuclear charge. So that means the greater energy is required to disturb this electronic configuration, to disturb the stability of neon. That is why the noble gas are less, uh, this thing, the ionization energy is maximum in case of noble gases and they are maximum stable, right. So we are taking into consideration the third property that is electron affinity. Electron affinity can also be called as electron gain enthalpy. So whatever word you can use for it, it means one in the same. So uh, we are going to study the third property that is the electron gain enthalpy. Or you can say electron affinity. So we did in the previous property that whenever we want to remove an electron, we have to supply energy from outside right and that energy is called as ionization energy we did in previous property. Now the question comes what is electron gain enthalpy actually? Electron gain enthalpy means whenever you need to add an electron because we can easily remove an electron and also we can add an electron. So to remove an electron we have to supply energy from outside but whenever we want to add an electron energy is released by an atom. 
So that energy which is released when an uh, electron is added to the outermost shell of an atom when it is in gaseous state is called as electron gain enthalpy. So I am just repeating again keep in mind to remove an electron you have to supply energy from outside and that is ionization energy right and when you want to add an electron electro, uh, energy is released from the atom and that energy is called as electron gain enthalpy. So that means to remove an electron we have to supply the energy in the form of ionization energy. So that means the energy is plus E plus E means positive it has to be supplied right but when we are adding an electron energy is released from the atom that means minus that means energy is released whenever something is happening into the system we take it as positive sign and whenever something is uh, uh, something the system is losing we take it as negative so that is why I have written plus e and minus e moreover you can also write it as plus delta e because the correct form to write is delta delta means change so that means the change in internal energy how the, how the energy change in energy how the energy has changed plus means you have given it and minus delta e means change in energy how the energy is being given by the atom so you should be know uh, little bit familiar with the sign conventions otherwise you will be using it in higher class but still uh, i was taking an example so i have told you what does this plus and e means exo and endothermic what is it exactly so exothermic means whenever the energy is released endothermic when you are giving in giving it so to remove an electron we have to supply it and that energy is called ionization energy and when you add an electron energy is released in the form electron gain enthalpy so that now coming to the point that how electron gain enthalpy varies along group and period. So again I am taking the example of group. So again I am taking the example of first group. I am writing the configuration. Again you know how to write it now. So every what happens to the electron gain enthalpy? It decreases. It has the same effect as the ionization energy uh, has. The same effect. Because the ionization energy and electron gain enthalpy both depend upon the nuclear charge. So when they, whenever there is a decrease in nuclear charge, so obviously the outermost shell electron is experiencing the less force of attraction. So that means it has uh, got the less force uh, it is experiencing from the nucleus. So if any anything has less force, so that means it uh, it is easy to extract it. So similarly because it is experiencing the less force so that means the energy will be given out will be less and even the, if you want to uh, remove the electron then energy absorbed will also be less. So similarly as you move down the group what happens again you have to write the same thing because we have to uh, explain the answer step wise. So as we are moving down the group what happened the number of shell increase what happens then nuclear charge decrease size increase so that nuclear charge decrease means less force of attraction so that means the uh, even the electron gain enthalpy is going to be less means less energy is released when an electron is added to the shell similarly it is for period as we move along the period the same example you can take every time when we are moving a new shell a new electron is added to the same shell due to which nuclear charge increase means force of attraction for the outermost shell electron increase therefore the size decrease so that means the electron gain enthalpy will obviously uh, going to be maximum and it is maximum for the case of halogens because they have such a small size so whenever you add an electron the tremendous energy is released right so this is the third property the periodic property that is the electron gain enthalpy next we are considering the corrector corrector when we talk about corrector in chemistry it means metallic corrector and it means non-metallic corrector metallic means tendency to lose electron and non-metallic means tendency to gain electron as we have done in the modern periodic table I told you that at extreme left there are metals and on extreme right there are non-metals so as the size increase what happens as we move down see you have to keep in mind that the metals always lose electron right and uh, the one who lose easily is more metallic so that means the one who will lose easily that means it is going to have the less ionization energy because the size must be increasing so that means the as we are moving the, down the group in the metallic 